Hey everybody, welcome back. So this video came about because of a shower thought that I had. We know we have L1 regularization or lasso, which uses this diamond shaped constraint in order to get solutions that have sparsity, which we like. We know we have ridge L2 regularization, which uses a circle shaped constraint in order to get solutions that avoid the correlated variables issue we have with lasso and also in some sense regularizes the parameters a little bit more equally. And we even had a video recently on elastic net, which was something between the diamond shaped lasso constraint and the circle shaped ridge constraint. And we saw that kind of gets the best of both worlds. But my weird shower thought was, why don't we ever talk about L3 regularization? Why is that not in the textbooks, not something you learn, not something in popular software packages? What would that even look like geometrically? And what kind of problems would it be good for? And beyond that, what if we talk about L4 regularization, L5 regularization? Are we about to crack open a whole new branch of mathematics? Well, before we get that far ahead of ourselves, let's go back to L3 regularization and start thinking about what that would look like. We can definitely start by defining it mathematically because we know the mathematical forms at the end of the day for L1 regularization and L2 regularization. So all we need to do is stick threes everywhere we see ones or twos in those other ones. And what we have is taking an L3 norm and setting that less than or equal to some number T. We'll just have that T be one for simplicity here. And what we see is if we draw this, we get something that looks really interesting. Just like we had elastic net kind of being a balance between this diamond in L1 and the circle in L2, we are literally pushing the envelope here by having more of a rounded kind of square thing. It's not exactly a circle. It's not exactly a square, but it's something in between when we talk about the L3 constraint. And actually that intuition is spot on because if we draw the L4 constraint, L5 constraint, L6, L10, L100 constraint, you can see as that order on the norm gets higher and higher and higher, closer to infinity, we are approaching a square constraint. And that is going to be really important. That geometric observation is going to be super important as we talk about what kinds of parameters are going to be preferred by this shape of constraint. And to start thinking about that, let's actually fall back on the very first thing, which was the L1 constraint or lasso. In the L1 constraint, we had a diamond. And that shape was super important because of these pointy corners of the diamond, which end up hitting the level curves of the objective function more often than not, very often, exactly at one of those corners. Because of the sharp jaggedness of those corners, the level curves are typically going to hit on one of those corners instead of just along arbitrarily one of the edges of the diamond. And a corner is what we call it geometrically, but what is that mathematically? Those corners are exactly where at least one, but not all, of the coefficients we care about is equal to zero. And that is exactly, folks, that is exactly what gives rise to the sparsity that we're seeking in the first place when we use L1 regularization. So those corners are really important because that's where the level curves hit and that's going to define the nature of the solution. And the nature of the solution in that case was something desirable to us. We wanted that sparsity. So let's kind of follow that logic in the same way as we have an L something norm where that something is approaching infinity, which we know geometrically is going to approach the square shape. The square shape also has corners and it's going to be the same exact thing. The level curves are typically going to hit at one of those four corners first before it hits along any of the arbitrary edges of the square. But the nature of those corners is mathematically different from the nature of those corners in lasso. In lasso, there were corners that gave a sparsity. What are the nature of those corners in the square shape? Well, if we look at them for a second, they're going to be exactly places where the magnitude of our coefficients is the same. For example, the top right corner is where both of the coefficients are the same positive number. The top left corner is where the coefficients aren't the same. One of them is positive, one of them is negative, but the magnitude of the coefficients is the exact same. So this kind of blew my mind and it was this awesome thing to see that geometric to mathematical to the property we might care about link kind of happen in my brain. We would want to use this square shaped constraint when we are promoting a solution where the parameters that we are estimating are going to be equal in magnitude, where that is something a priori desirable to us as we go into our problem. And that's kind of where we had the extreme case, but even going back to the L3 norm, which was the inspiration for this video, that's not gonna be a square, but you can see the square shape kind of taking form there. And it's gonna have not as extreme of properties as the perfect square shape, but it's gonna start having tendency towards those kind of solutions. 
as we talk about the L3, L4, L5, and as this becomes more and more and more squarish, we are gonna have a higher and higher and higher tendency for the level curves of the objective function to hit at those, at those cusps and corner points that we're talking about there, which are exactly the points where the coefficients that we estimate are gonna have roughly equal magnitudes. So now we understand what the L3 norm looks like geometrically, what kind of solutions it induces, but we haven't really answered the question of why. Why is this not really talked about as much and when, what kinds of problems would this be helpful in? Well, as I started thinking about when would I want this? When would I a priori want the solutions to my OLS model to have roughly equal magnitude? It was pretty hard to come up with a concrete example and that's probably why it doesn't get talked about so much. But eventually I did kind of figure out the nature of times you would want this, at least one subset. I don't think I fully thought this through and I am relying on you in the comments to come up with other places you could use this. But imagine you are engineering a linear function that is not meant to model something about the real world, but rather you are specifically engineering this function to have certain properties and to be used for a certain purpose. So let me make it more concrete. Pretend you're the data scientist for a big university and you're trying to come up with some kind of measure of student aptitude. And that's going to be based on their GPA from their freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior years in college. And it's going to be a linear function. Now, a priori, you don't want any of these features to have more of a weight than the other in the, in the virtue of academic fairness. And that might be a case where you want to rely on an L3 or L4 or beyond norm because you roughly want to keep the parameters that you estimate at the end of the day from your OLS estimation to have kind of in the same ballpark, to have similar magnitude. Maybe you don't want them to be the exact same, but you kind of want them to be similar in magnitude, and that would be a perfect use case to use the L3 regularization. But these use cases, I will admit, are few and far between, which likely is why this doesn't get as much time in the spotlight as lasso and ridge regularization do. But if you have ever actually used L3 regularization, or if you can think of a, another use case of L3 regularization, given everything we talked about in this video, I would love to hear about it. At the very least, I hope this video is at least kind of interesting to you because we are pushing the envelope literally, again, the constraint is literally pushing beyond the constraints we know about, pushing the envelope on things that we learn about, and that's terribly exciting to me. Just thinking about, okay, here's the things, the tools we are taught to use in data science, statistics, and mathematics, but what if we went beyond? What if we extended this in some way? Are we discovering something that no one ever thought about? Or are we discovering ground that someone has treaded and realized wasn't really worth a big discussion? But either way, it's really exciting for us to go to those areas mathematically and mentally. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments, especially for this video, where I want to hear about your thoughts about this and the use cases you might think about, very welcome in the section below. Have a great rest of your day, folks, and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people next time.